Hello and welcome back to part two of my tutorial on how to use watermarks within Corel PaintShop Pro X9. In part one of this tutorial we actually created a watermark and now we're going to go back and use that watermark uh, manually and within automation. So let's look at how we do that. So I'll just grab a photograph here and grab any photograph. And what you're going to do is go to the image layer and choose watermark, visible watermark. Okay, and that brings up the watermark dialog. Now we haven't used this before. So you click preview on image if you want to see the uh, see the watermark there. So we're going to browse. Uh, we saved our watermark in with our documents. So we have to go to documents. Uh, and we were in Corel PaintShop Pro X19 and I created a folder called watermarks. And that's where I save my watermark, this one here, watermark white. I'm going to open that and you'll see that that watermark has now appeared here. Okay, now's a good time to click preview image. So you can see how the watermark appears in the bottom right hand corner. Now you can adjust your watermark size, obviously. So that's probably just a bit too big. Let's see there. So that looks about right. You can actually choose where you want lower left, lower right, upper left, upper right. I, I, I like it in the bottom right hand. You can also do center and tiled if you want to do one that's across the center of the photograph because you don't want anybody uh, taking your photograph or breaking copyright. I generally put it in the bottom right hand corner for uh, photographs that I post uh, to social media so that it's marked, which tells people not to touch my photographs. Uh, but it's not a photograph that I'm selling that I've done professionally. So I don't mind it being in public domain. You can also set opacity. So here we've got it 50%. You can set it so it's uh, very, very faint, as you would do if you were doing a, uh, a photograph that you were presenting as a sample to someone before you provide their final cuts uh, and you can also make it very dark. I sort of like it fairly dark or, or sorry fairly well presented in this particular application but I also like it embossed. It gives it that um, three-dimensional sort of look to it there which you, you're doing to a basic two-dimensional watermark and you can play around with these settings here and sort of get them how you like them. So I'm fairly happy with that now and that's how it would, would go onto a single photograph. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this as uh, my watermark. Uh, just so that if I come back into this dialog box, I can have a list of different watermarks. Uh, and I could um, just drop, you know, choose from the drop down which one I'm going to use. So I could apply that. If I do, when I close out, of course, it's now applied to my... Um, to my photograph and I save the photograph. I'll just do a control Z to remove that and just show you again if I do image, watermark, visible watermark, now of course I can just select uh, my RAV SP white from the drop down. All my settings come back in and I click OK and there you go, you have it. It's, um, it's watermarked a photograph manually. We can also create a script. Now if you've uh, if you have used my workspace, you'd have all the same buttons I have up here and you'd have this one uh, to start a script recording. But I'll assume for the purposes of this demonstration you haven't done that. So you go to File, you go to Script and you go Start Recording. Okay, And I'm going to go to Image, Watermark, Visible Watermark, I'm going to choose my Grab SP watermark, not use uh, the last one used. I could have done that, but if you'd been changing your watermarks, it would cause the script to use the last used one. So I'm being very specific and using my Grab SP white. Clicking OK on that, and then I go back in to scripts, and I save the recording. I can pause it. Cancel recording, or in this case, save recording. Now there's a folder called Scripts Restricted. 
and I'm going to call this recording uh, watermark ASP white okay and I'm going to save that script okay so we'll take the watermark off for all intents and purposes so now I can go in here and I can go script and I can run a strip I can run a script so from the scripts I can choose my watermark Rave SP white which I just chose or just uh, created and run it and there you go it's created it okay so yes you could have done that manually but here's where it starts to get really useful I can right click up here on the toolbar and I can go customize okay and I can click on the scripts tab I'm going to go to the drop down and I'm going to go and find the script that I just created which should be here it is there watermark grab SP white choose that color there and I'm going to bind the two together and that creates watermark grab SP white now you would create those for all your watermarks just grab it and drag it up here and drop it and that created this little light bulb up here and of course if you run the uh, cursor across it or the pointer it tells you that that's what it is okay I'll close this now so now just I can I'll close that and I can open I'll open another photograph for us though this one here okay you finished your editing on a photo you want to watermark it now all you do is press this light bulb up here and hey presto your watermark is applied to your photograph okay so that's how you do that that's how you create uh, watermarks to go with a button now there's one more step we can do and that is to make it uh, part of a batch job so you can run it on a whole directory so let's undo that for now okay so we'll close that for now so I have a folder called uh, show I have three photographs in there you would see that none of these three photographs have my watermark in them so if we go back here we now go to run a batch job so we say down here we go to batch process okay and this is a new batch process in X9 it's different to the previous version so you can add photographs so we go pictures uh, show and temp here's my three photos okay so I choose all three of those photographs and select so they all come in here I'll remove this one because it was in another directory so we've got three photographs here okay uh, so we look at batch actions so under batch actions you could get tricked into running the watermark but we're going to run the script that we ran before and we're going to find the script down the bottom that we created which was watermark rab sp white we're going to apply that and then for output uh, this is also new uh, you can say destination folder where it's going to go I'm going to make it put the uh, photos into the same folder that they started off in right uh, and I'm going to rename them by taking the original file name okay so we're going to rename it uh, let's see I'm going to add a date document name maybe and then I'm going to add date and I might add time to it as well uh, document name time date so there we go so that should uh, that should work that should give it its original document name prompt if name already exists overwrite without wanting it's best to leave it like that you can change the file format that it saves at uh, security features you can delete the EXIF information I always leave them because that's got copyright data in it uh, leave location and leave embedded uh, watermarks along okay so when I hit start it will actually save all my settings here so that the next time I use the batch process it will uh, we won't have to change the naming etc just the destination directory so I hit start uh, would you like to save a copy yes so now I click that and it goes off and it runs the job on all those files 
uh, show report. So it says it's saved all three, it's done. I click OK. And if I go back to my directory there, I can now see that I've got a duplicate of each of my photographs and the duplicates all have the watermark on them. So that's how to add in a watermark, how to use it manually, how to use it uh, in a script. We've created a script, how to use that script as a button within the menu, and then how to add that script to a batch process where you can do multiple photographs in a folder at any one time. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, please drop me a comment or a like if you like the video, and thanks for your time.